Tonight's topic is called Spiritual Vampires, uh, the Chronicles of an Unbelieving Wife. Spiritual Vampires, the Chronicles of an Unbelieving Wife. That is tonight's topic. Spiritual Vampires, the Chronicles of an Unbelieving Wife. Watch this. Give me Romans 7, verse 12. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Read. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. So the laws of God is holy. The commandments of God, they are holy. They are just and they are good for us. Okay, watch this. Um, Give me the book of uh, First Timothy now. That's it right there. First Timothy 1, verse 8. Read that for me. First book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. Come on. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. You see that thing? He said, we know that the law is good. So the laws of God is good. You understand? If a man use it lawfully, meaning what? Don't abuse the laws of the Most High God. That's what he's saying. Read that again, verse 8. The first book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. So to use it lawfully, meaning what? To, to obey it. That's what it means, to obey it. It, it. When it says, if a man use it lawfully, meaning obey the laws of God. That's what he's saying right there. That's why he's saying it's good. Okay? But you must use it lawfully. You must obey it. You can't say the laws of God is done away with. That's you now abusing the laws of God. You are not using it lawfully. That's what he's saying. Go back to where he was at. Romans 7 verse 14. No, no. Romans 7 verse 12. Book of Romans 7 verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and mm -hmm. just and good. You see that thing? And just and good. Jump down to verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the law is what? The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. Come on. But I am carnal, sold under sin. It says, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Meaning what? In my, in, it says, do you remember if you read the book of Psalms, it says, in sin did my mother conceive me. That's what that's going into. Read that again. Romans 7, verse 14. The book of Romans 7, verse 14. For mm -hmm. we know the law is spiritual. That we know that the law is spiritual. The laws of God is spiritual. Now hold this. Give me First Corinthians. We're coming back here. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse, we're going to start at verse 11. First book of Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, mm -hmm. even so. The things of God knoweth no man, but the spirits of God. You see what he's saying? So he's giving, he, the apostle Paul is telling you only the spirit of, the spirit of the most High God deal with spiritual things. You understand? The thoughts of men, they deal with fleshly stuff. Read that again, verse 11. First, second book of Corinthians. First book of Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, you see that thing? So he's saying, for what man knoweth the things of a man, except the same mean, except the spirit of man which is in him, meaning what? You only, you know, you know the things that pertain to you, meaning everybody knows themselves. That's what he's saying. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Read on. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. But the spirits of God. You see that thing? So the things of God knoweth no man, meaning what? That, 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 that carnal man. You understand? But the spirit of God. So the spiritual things deals with the spirit. Fleshly stuff is fleshly, sin. You understand? Read on. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Mm-hmm. That we might know the things that are freely given to us. Okay, come on, read that again, verse 12. First book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. 
mm -hmm. that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You see that thing that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Give me that in James. Okay, you know what I want? James chapter one, start of verse five. The apostle James. Read that. The book of James chapter one verse five. Come on. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and mm -hmm. upbraid it. And it shall be given him. Okay, read that right. Read that right. Come on. What's going on? Read that again, verse 5. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally really? and not, and it shall be given him. So now he says, if you lack wisdom, you must do what? You must ask the Most High God to give you the wisdom, and the Lord will give it to you liberally, freely, if you ask it the right way. You ask it for the right reason, the Lord will give it, will give it unto you. Only if you keep his commandments, the Lord will give you wisdom. Okay, go back to where was that? First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Again. First book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So the things that are freely given to us of God, that's the wisdom that the Apostle James is explaining. The Apostle James is explaining to us the things that are freely given of us of God is what? Wisdom. But we must ask for that wisdom. We must ask it for the right reasons. The Lord will surely dispense that wisdom unto us. Come on. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual you see what he's saying he says not in the words which man's wisdom teaches because man's wisdom is what man's wisdom is christianity that's man's wisdom politics that's man's wisdom democracy man's wisdom that's the wisdom of man that's not the wisdom of the most high read that part again verse 13 first book of corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 come on which thing also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. So the things that we speak is not the things that man's wisdom teaches because man's wisdom is garbage. Let me say that again. Man's wisdom is garbage. But this, the, the wisdom of the Most High God that he gives to all the, the, the children of Israel freely, liberally, listen, those are the things that we speak. You understand? As it is written. Come on. But which the Holy Ghost teaches you see that thing? But which the Holy Ghost teacheth. What is the Holy Ghost? Give me that in Acts 7.51. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Those are the things that we speak. Not man's wisdom. Okay, come on. Acts 7.51. The book of Acts 7 verse 51. He stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Mm -hmm. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. Come on. As your fathers did, so do ye. Jump down to verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So the Holy Ghost in verse 51 is the laws of God in verse 53 that we have been rejecting since from the time we left Egypt unto this day. That's the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is God's commandments. Okay, go back to 1 Corinthians 2, verse, 12, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Read. Which also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Mm -hmm. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We compare spiritual things with spiritual. What is the spiritual things? Is the laws of God. Go back to Romans 7, verse 14. We're coming back here. Romans chapter 7. Verse 14, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Watch this. Romans 7, verse 14. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So he says, for we know that the law is spiritual. So the laws of God is spiritual. 
So when we go back to 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14 again, verse, I mean, verse 13 again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 13. Which things also we speak are in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You see that thing, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We use the word of God to compare spiritual things because only the word of God will be able to discern spiritual things. You understand? The reason why things happen the way that they do, the reason why people behave and speak the way that they do is because we use this, the word of God to discern the spirit behind it. Okay, come on. Verse 14. But the natural man receives. But the what? The natural man. The natural man is the sinful man. The natural man is the sinful man. Come on. Receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. You see that thing? The natural man, which is the sinful man, the, the carnally minded man. Give me that in Romans chapter 8, verse 6. The natural man is the carnally minded man. Romans 8, verse 6. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For to be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but to be spiritual, spiritually minded is life and peace. You see that thing? To be, but it says, for to be carnally minded is death, because the mind is spiritually dead. You understand? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because what is the spirit? The laws of God. So if your mind meditates on God's commandments, you are going to have life and peace. But if you are meditating on the what? The things that man's wisdom teacheth, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to die spiritually. Mental decay. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Watch this. Keep reading. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You see that thing? The carnal mind is an enemy of God. The carnal mind is... The carnal mind bears hatred towards the Father. Because the, the most High God comes with laws. Statues and commandments, order, structure. That's what the, the laws of God come with them. That is, that is a kryptonite to the black man and the black woman. Black men, black women hate order. They hate law and order. That's why black so-called black people, the Israelites, they hate the police. Any kind of order. They say, you know what? I got to go. I don't, I don't like where the school is going. I don't really like the way things are. They just be giving some lame excuses. But the reason why men leave this truth Women live this truth is because of what? They hate law and order. That's why. Read that again. Verse 7. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Mm -hmm. For it is not subject to the law of God. Read. Neither indeed can be. Meaning what? That mind is doomed. Okay. He says because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Meaning what? That carnal mind does not submit itself to the laws of God. Because to submit yourself to the laws of God, that means you must submit yourself to the order that God has given you. Whether it be a man or woman, you must submit to the role that God gave you. For the man is to go out there to teach the gospel, to, order, to, to set the nation in order, to set your house in order. That's the order, that's the role that the Most High God has created for the black man to submit himself to. For the sisters as well. The sisters have a role to, to fulfill. That role is Titus 2. You understand? They must teach the young women. They must teach the young women to be sober. To love their husbands. To love their children. You understand? To have good works. So that's the role. That the sisters must play. Okay? So but if neither, speak, neither genders submit to the... To, to the laws of God, they are not fulfilling that role. That means what? They have hatred towards the most high God. That's how, is that simple? Okay, go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. First book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man is the what we just read. The natural man is the carnally minded man. You understand? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9. The natural man. This is the mind state of, a, of the natural man. The sinful man. Okay? Um, 
Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, start at verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 13. For mm -hmm. what man is he that can know the counsel of God? Or who can think what the will of the Lord is? So he says, who can think what the will of the Lord is? You understand the counsel of the Lord and the will of the Lord. The counsel of the Lord is his commandments. The will of the Lord is his commandments. That's his wisdom. Okay, come on. Wisdom of Solomon. Wait. 9 verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You see that? The thoughts of mortal men, meaning carnally minded men. A, a, a mind that is consumed with sinful thoughts. That's, that's, that's the, the, the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Because it's always misery they are thinking in their head. It's not to build. It's not to come out of sin. It's not to come out of some lust. No, it's to indulge in it. Okay, read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. The devices is what? Is the plans. Because now your thought is, 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 is rushing through. Whatever, it, whatever thought that your mind, whatever, anything that your mind attracts, guess what? You're going to spend some time on it. Because that mind is not disciplined. That mind, any, that mind is open season. It's like, give me that in, in, in Proverbs 25. Real quick. Mm. I need to get into the topic. But let me just go where the spirit takes for now. Give me, Sarah, give me Proverbs 25, 28 real quick. Proverbs 25, 28. The book of Proverbs, to 25, verses 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. You see that thing? He that hath no rule over his own spirit. If you cannot rule your spirit, meaning what? Because the only way to rule your spirit, you must examine yourself and know yourself. You understand? He says, if you cannot examine yourself to know what your, what your shortcomings are, he says you are like a bro you are like a city that is broken down and without walls, because the walls they protect the city. So if there's there's the, there's a city but there's no walls, anybody can sack the city and overthrow it. Meaning what? Anything that goes on outside, you understand? Whether it's on the news, whether it's on YouTube, whatever it is, it occupies your mind. Your mind gets consumed by that thing. Why? Because your mind is not what. Your mind doesn't meditate on the laws of God. So you don't have a filter to what you attract to your mind and what you repel. The laws of God is the only way for you to know what is good and what is bad. You're not keeping God's commandments. Your mind will attract anything. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. And our devices are but uncertain. Really? For the corruptible body presses down the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind that museth upon many things. You see that thing? The mind that museth upon many things. That is the natural man. This is the mind of the natural man. The carnally minded man, that carnally minded brother or sister. This is where their mind is at, always, at all times. 99.9% .9 of the time, the mind is musing upon many things. And those things that it muses upon is not things, it's not constructed things to build. It's not to benefit Israel, no, it's to benefit their own selfish lusts. Okay? Go back to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. for, for they are foolishness unto him. For they are what? Foolishness unto him. You see that thing? The natural man, the sinful man, when they hear, when they hear the things of the Spirit of God, to them it's going to be like we're talking foolishness. You understand? They are foolishness unto them. They don't get it because the mind is sick. The mind is dead. So when you read the scriptures, you break it down. They don't get it. You understand? They are twitching like a robot. Why? Because the brain can compute what's coming out. Read that again. Verse 14. 
First book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. For they are foolishness unto him. Come on. Neither can he know them. Neither can he know them. Come on. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Because the things of the Spirit of the Most High God, you can only descend them with the Spirit of the Lord. You cannot descend them with the, the wisdom that man, the wisdom that man teaches. You cannot descend the things of the Most High God using what? Using words which man's wisdom teaches, like we read in verse 13. You're not going to be able to use man's wisdom to descend the things of the Most High. That's not going to happen. You have to keep God's commandments. So you can be able to discern spiritual things. You understand? Watch this. First Corinthians 1 verse 18. I'm still on topic. Don't get it twisted. We're still dealing with spiritual things. Okay? It is, this, is, this, 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 this whole thing is all spiritual. But in order for you to tap into that frequency, you must keep God's commandments. You understand? Because the Bible is a real book. It's reality. Everything that you see around you is all written in this book. You understand? Read on. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. Come on. So the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. You see that thing? The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. So to our people that do not believe or they don't want to humble down to what this Bible is saying, guess what? It says to them is foolishness. But it says to them that perish, meaning they are what? If they don't repent, they're going to die. It's that simple. And we're not talking about the death of, okay, I'm dead now. Your spirit goes to the Father, you are at rest. No, no. The death he's talking about is talking about the second death, where you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be in a lake of fire that burn, that, that, that burneth with brimstone. That's forever. Eternal damnation. Okay, read that again. Verse 18. First book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 18. Read. For the preaching of the cross, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Really? Foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. You see that thing? But unto us that believe this Bible and apply it is the power of the Most High because we can discern things that they cannot discern. That's why um, the, the pastors, the politicians, the scientists, the economists, they, they cannot go toe to toe with this Bible if it's, it's in the right hands. And the Israelites are, we are the only ones that know how to wield this Bible. We can, they cannot go toe to toe with us. It's impossible. They can't. You understand? Read on. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The wisdom of the wise is talking about what? The noble men in the world. You understand? Men of renown for the wisdom of the world. The psychologists, the psychiatrists, the, the businessmen, the CEOs, the what not, all of those are what? Those are the wise men that the law says he's going to crush them. You understand? And guess who's using to do that? The prophets. Read that again, verse 19. First book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 19. Read. It's written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. You see that thing he says he's going to bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent, the, the, the wise men of this world. Come on. Where is the wise? When it comes to this Bible, where is the wise? You cannot find anyone that is wise outside of this Bible. Read. Where is the scribe? The scribe is the, is the what? Is those that write all these books and all that. Those are the scribes. Read. Where is the dis disputer of this world? Where, where is the disputer of this world? Read on. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? You see that thing? Hath not God made, the, hath not, hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Read. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. You see that thing? It says the world by wisdom doesn't know the most high. Because the, the, the men... The, the men and women in the world with the so-called wisdom they got, they cannot know the Mosai. 
The only way to know the most high God is to humble down and do what this Bible says. Read. It pleased God by the mm-hmm. foolish. It does what? It pleased God. The most high God is pleased. Is pleased. He says it pleased God. Come on. By the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You see that thing? Only those that believe are going to get delivered when the bombs drop. Those that believe, they will be delivered on that day when the nuclear bombs drop on this earth. You understand? Read on. That's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. Watch this. Um, Give me... Go back to Romans 7 verse 14 now for me again. The book, of Rom- the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, soul under sin. But I am carnal, soul under sin. We know that the law is spiritual. So, on topic... We are going to be dealing with um, spiritual vampires, the chronicles of the, of the unbelieving wife, spiritual vampires, okay? Spiritual vampires. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Some of you might think I'm going over Proverbs 31. Really. I'm not going there, okay? Why am I going to Proverbs 31 for spiritually spiritual vampires? Pay attention. Proverbs 31 verse 10. Watch this. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 31 verse 10. Read. Who can find a virtuous woman? Mm -hmm. For her price is far above rubies. You see what he's saying? He says, who can find a virtuous woman? That's the question he's posing. Remember, this is King Solomon asking the question. He says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Remember, King Solomon was the wisest man that ever walked this earth. You understand? Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 17. Come on. He had given me certain knowledge of things that are. What did he say? He says, for he had given me certain knowledge of the things that are namely come on namely to know how the world was made how the what the world was made how the world was made i need you to read the right pronouns come on namely to know how the world was made ray and the operation of the elements now that's some heavy stuff right there so king solomon was given certain knowledge of the things that exist. He says, namely, to know how the world was made. Meaning King Solomon knew exactly how this, this earth, how the world was created, how the un- everything that, he, that exists, he knows how it was put together. And the operation of the elements. This is talking about the periodic table of elements. That's where the wet man gets the periodic table of elements. He gets it from here. Because we had books about these things. Go ahead. The beginning. The beginning, ending, Mm -hmm. and midst of times. He says he saw, Solomon knew, he says he knew how the world was made and the operation of the elements, the beginning, the ending, and the midst of the times. So Solomon knew, he he knows what Aram looks like. You understand? He saw how everything was created, how the world was put together before people was put in it. You understand? He saw when Aram was formed and all that. Okay, he saw the end of times, meaning what? When America is going to be destroyed and we go, when we get the kingdom. He says, and the midst of the times, he saw the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, when we ruled Europe, Russia, you understand, Scotland and all that for over 1,000 years. He saw all of that. You understand? Read on. The alterations of the turning of the sun. Read. And the change of seasons. You see that part right there? It says the alteration of the turning of the sun. The sun is the one that does the movement. Okay? And the change of season. So he understood weather. That's why the white man is trying to tell the weather and all that. They want to be like our forefathers. But here's something I want to show you, brothers and sisters. You see that part when it says, I'm going here for a reason. 
It says, for he had given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely, to know how the world was made. Because in the world, um, I think there's, there's a brother online, I think Pilani is online. Um, so they talk about the Big Bang Theory and all that. You know, they say there was this big explosion. What type of explosion creates? Like that doesn't make any sense, right? An explosion destroys stuff, okay? When the World Trade Center was blown up, I didn't see anything just pop up out of it right there. Anybody saw that? No, sir. I've never seen that. An explosion destroys. They say, no, there was a Big Bang Theory. It says how the world was made. Not destroyed. No, how the world was made. Not how the world exploded. No, how the world was created and the operation of the elements. Now, what I want to show you something is this. King Solomon, I'm showing you the wisdom of King Solomon. It says, he saw how the world was made and the operation of the elements, the beginning, the ending, and the midst of the times, and the alteration of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons. Now, watch this. Go back to Proverbs 31 verse 10. We're just giving an example of the wisdom that King Solomon had, right? Watch this. Proverbs 31 verse 10. Read what you got. The book of Proverbs 31 verse 10. Come on. Who can find a virtuous woman? Uh -huh. Who her price is far above rubies. So King Solomon is asking the question, who can find a virtuous woman? So obviously, he, listen, he can boldly ask the question. He can boldly ask the question, who can find a virtuous woman? Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 25. We're going to start there. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 25. Read. I applied mine heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom mm -hmm. and the reason of things. Read. And, and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. So King Solomon, he said, listen, because he had too much time on his hands. It says he applied his mind to know and to search and to seek out wisdom, okay, which is fine, and the reason of things, meaning psychology of men. That's why it says reason of things, it goes into psychology. Hold this. Kim, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. Let's go back there. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 17. For he had given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely, to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements. Read verse 20 now, watch this. There's the natures of living creatures. So King Solomon understood the nature of living creatures. He understood the nature of the lion. He understood the nature of the scorpion, the nature of an ant, the nature of a cockroach. He understood the nature of the stingray. He understood the natures of all the living creatures. You're on air, sea, and land. He understood all of them. Come on. The natures of living creatures. Read. Right? The furies of wild beasts. He understood the fury of wild beasts. He, understand, he understood that. You ever notice, um, you see, like, uh, especially Esau, he does that a lot. You be, uh, you know, brushing a lion and all that. You understand? Uh, a rhino. They be taking pictures with it. And then he just gets angry. And then he takes the horn. It, as all this, there's this video of a couple. They were taking a picture behind a rhino. A rhino was eating. They were taking picture behind it. The rhino stopped what he was doing. And he went and he killed both of them. You understand? Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So Solomon understood the furies of what? The furies of wild beasts. Go ahead. The furies of wild beasts. Mm -hmm. The violence of winds. He understood the and... violence of winds. Hold on. He understood the violence of winds, meaning storms. You know, tornadoes. He understood that. Read. And the reasonings of men. And the reasonings of men. The reasonings of men, that's psychology. That's why it says the reason of things, reasonings of men. He understood psychology behind 
human behavior. Go ahead. The diversities of plants. Diversities of plant, that's what, botany? Yes, botany. Go ahead. And the virtues of roots. Meaning what? The virtues of roots, he understood uh, the herbs. You understand? The, med the medicinal purposes of all the herbs that exist upon this earth. He knew all of that. All right, come on. And the, virt and the virtues of roots. And come all on. such things as are either secret or manifest, they might know. You see that he says he knows things that are manifest and things that are secret. He says he knows them all. Go back to where he was at now. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 25. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 25. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reasoning of things mm -hmm. and to know the wickedness of folly, really? even of foolishness and madness. So, so King Solomon understood, he understood the psychology of things, the psychology of men. He says to know the wickedness of folly, the wickedness of the wickedness behind foolishness, even of foolishness and madness. He understood the spirit that was working behind that behavior. Next verse. Watch this. And I find more bitter than death, the woman. Stop right there. Read that part again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. And I find more bitter than death, the woman. So he's saying he finds more bitter. Remember, he experimented with anything and everything you can think of, good and evil. He says, I find more. He says, there's something that I found that is more bitter, you understand, than death. What is bitter than death? He says, the woman. That's some heavy stuff right there. He says, I find more bitter than death, the woman. Okay, come on. Whose heart is snares and nets. Whose heart, whose mind, meaning this woman, that is bitter than death. Meaning death is better. That's what he's saying. Whose heart is snares and nets. What is a snare? A snare is a trap. A net is somebody that you're going to, is something that is going to trip you up. Okay. It says, read on. And her hands as bands. And her hands as bands. Meaning what? You are going to be confined by this woman. That's what he's saying. Read on. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. Read. But, but the sinner shall be taken by her. You see what he's saying? Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from this woman. Like who's, who, who's what? She's, she's more bitter than death. You understand? Her, her mind is snares and nets and her hands as bands. It says, whoso pleaseth God shall escape from this type of woman, but the sinner shall be taken by her because the sinner is not going to leave this woman. The sinner will not, the sinner is not going to be able to see that this right here, I'm going to end up in hell on this one. Okay? So that this type of woman right here, she's a spiritual vampire, this one. Because what do vampires do when you watch movies? They suck blood. They drink blood. So this one, she will suck the life out of you. That's what the Lord is saying right here. You understand? Watch this. Hold this. Give me First Esdras 4.26. 1 Esdras chapter 4 verse 26. There's something in the spirit I'm picking up. Okay? First Esdras chapter 4 verse 26. Watch this. First book of Esdras chapter 4 verse 26. Read. Yet... Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. This is a simp. This right here, this is a simp right here. Okay? Many there be that have run out of their wits for women, meaning what? They've done lost their minds for women. Okay, come on. And become servants for their sakes. And become servants for their sakes. You see that thing? Because now, you see this woman, she, what? It says, her heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. So read that part again, verse 26. First book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26. Read. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. Read. 
and become servants for their sakes. And become servants for their sakes. Meaning what? You got her bloomers on. That's what he's really saying here. You understand? She got your kahunas in her purse. That's what's going on here. And become servants for their sake. Meaning what? This is an example of a simp. This is simp 101 Chronicles right here. Go ahead. Verse 27. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. You see that thing is as many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. Because this type of woman, she knows how to identify a simp. She knows how to do it. Okay, this woman knows how to identify a simp. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs 7. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 5. Watch this. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 7, verses 5. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, mm -hmm. from the stranger which flattereth with her words. You see that thing? It says that ye may, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Meaning what? This sister right here, she's good with the tongue. You understand? She knows how to work that poisonous thing in her mouth. You see that thing? It says, the stranger with flattereth with her words. Because go back to Ecclesiastes, hold this, hold Proverbs. We're coming back. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26 again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Come on. And I find more bitter than death the woman mm -hmm. whose heart is snares and nets. And her hands as bands. Mm -hmm. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. But the sinner shall be taken by her. You see that thing? But the sinner is not going to be able to see these things. The sinner will not see these things. It says she snares, nets, and her hands as bands. So when she flatters you, guess where you are going? Her snares, nets, and her hands that are bands. You understand? Go back to Proverbs 7 verse 5. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 5. Read. That they may keep the that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with the words. Come on. For at the window of my house I look through my casement. He says, At the window of my house, I looked through my casement. Watch this. Go ahead. And behold among the simple ones. And beheld among the simple ones. Meaning what? The simps. When it says simple ones, it talk about a simp. Beheld, it says, be, and beheld the simple ones. The ones, the simple ones that Ezra is talking about. You understand? Read. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. You see what he's saying right there? He says, I discerned among the youths. Meaning this woman... She knows how to work her stuff, her tongue, how she looks and all of that. She knows how to do that because the, the, the beauty, the tongue, the, all that, the, the, the decoration, all of that is how to catch the prey. You ever seen that fish in the waters, deep waters? It's got a, it's got a, it's got a, it's got a thing like a globe. It's like it's got a bulb, that fish. The huge fish in the waters is got a bulb. So when, it, when that thing lights up in the waters, all the prey, they be attracted by that thing. Wow, that thing is beautiful. As soon as they come close, it devours it at instant. That's what this is right here. You understand? Because this woman went, go back to Ecclesiastes 7.26. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 26. Come on. And I find more bitter than death, the woman. Mm -hmm. Her heart is snares and nets. Right? And her hands as bands. And her hands as bands. So this woman, you're not going to see it immediately that that right there is what? That's the graveyard right there. You're not going to see it because what? There's a decoration that is being put the front. Do you understand? The management office is that's what you see. Okay, go back to Proverbs chapter 7. 
Um, Proverbs chapter 7, verse 8 now. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 7, verse 8. Passing through the streets near a corner and went the way to her house. And he went the way to her house. Passing through the street near her corner and he went the way to her house because she allows them to her house. The point is, this spiritual vampire is not obvious that she's a vampire. You're not going to tell. You understand? You are not going to tell. But there's going to be telltale signs. When you apply the laws of God, you're going to start to pick up that's a vampire right there. You understand? She will suck the life out of you because they don't believe this Bible. You understand? And you brothers, don't be simp. Okay, don't be simple up in here. Because I know so I see some of you, you just moving in, you are in simpleville. Don't be in simpleville. You must get off that train. Okay. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 5, real quick. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 3. The book of Proverbs, book of 5, verse 3. Come on. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. A honeycomb. Mm -hmm. Uh, honey, that's a sweet thing. You see that, 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 you know, when you buy honey, mm -hmm. that, that right there. Read that part again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 3. Read. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb. Read. And her mouth is smoother than oil. You see that part right there? The lips of the strange woman drop as a honeycomb. And her mouth is smoother than oil. Meaning what? She knows how to, she knows how to flatter. She knows how to flatter. You understand? We st I'm still, I'm still on topic. Don't get it twisted. I'm still on topic. So those that have an ear to hear, they will understand what's coming out. Go ahead. Verse five, verse, uh, verse four. But her end is bitter as warm wood. Stop right there. You see that part? Who can explain? You see, but her end is bitter as warm wood. Let me hear some brothers talking here, okay? Uh, let me ask Soldier Hair Guy. When he says, but her end is bitter as wormwood, what is that talking about, her end? What is that? So her end is talking about the behind, her behind, sir. That's the behind, okay? That's her behind. It says, and her end is bitter as wormwood, meaning what? You're going to get death, Okay. Read that part again, verse 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 4. But her end is bitter as wormwood. Read. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Sharp as a two-edged sword. You see that thing right there? Hmm. Woo. Read on. Her feet go down to death. Mm -hmm. Her steps take hold on hell. He says her feet go down to death and her steps take hold on hell. Because that's where she's taking you. Go ahead. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable. Mm -hmm. that, thou can, that thou canst not know them. He says her ways are movable. Meaning what? She knows how to, she knows how to deal. At the table. She knows how to deal. He says her ways are movable. That thou cannot know them. Meaning you can't know them. She's slick. So go back to Ecclesiastes 7. Verse 26. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7. Verse 26. Read. I find more bitter than death. The woman. Whose heart is snares and nets. And her hands as bands. Who so pleased that God shall escape from her. But the sinner shall be taken by her. So now, one of the things that, um, what you need to understand is that a lot of the times, the major thing that brothers, um, the brothers, they, um, they get caught up with a spiritual vampire is the box. You understand? They make decisions based on the little men downstairs instead of the little men up here. So now you make decisions based on that. Guess what's going to happen? He says, but the sinner shall be taken by her. She will infect you. She will suck the life out of you. You understand? Because she don't believe. But she understands that this is where your problem lies. 
your lust is your problem. You understand? And because you are, you are addicted to the box, guess what? She will infect you even more. You'll be even more infected. You're not going to be able to see the red flags, the things that you're supposed to see and say, you know what? That's a red flag right there. That's a red flag. You're not going to pick those things up. You understand? That's when you are properly simped up. Watch this. Give me. Um, keep reading. Keep reading. Verse 27. The book of Ecclesiastes 7, verse 27. Behold, mm -hmm. this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. So now remember what we read, because I know some of you forgotten already. Go back to Proverbs 31, verse 10. Because King Solomon asked the question. You understand? Now, he's, now verse 25, verse 26 is explaining to you the spiritual vampire. You understand? Proverbs 31, verse 10. Watch this. The book of Proverbs 31, verse 10. Read. Who can find a virtuous woman? Mm -hmm. For her price is far above rubies. Because this virtuous, the virtuous woman, guess what? She's like rubies, very hard to find. Very rare. You understand? You cannot find a virtuous woman just like that. Mm -mm. You understand? You must years to find. It will take years to find a virtuous woman. Watch this. See Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 27. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 27. Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. So now King Solomon, he asked the question, he said, who can find a virtuous woman? Obviously, he didn't find one. That's why he asked the question. He saw the beginning the middle and the end of time. Now he's asking the question, who can find a virtuous woman? Now he's going to tell you, because King Solomon, he had a thousand women. Okay? Now he's going to give you an example of how rare it is to find a virtuous woman. Verse 27, one more again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 27. Behold, this have I found, said the preacher, Counting one by one to find out the account. Mm -hmm. Come on. Which yet my soul seeketh. Really? But I find not. You see that thing? So he says he, count, he was counting one by one to find out the account, meaning the number, the, the total number. He says, which yet my soul seeketh. He says his soul was seeking for this virtuous woman, but I find not. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 28, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found. You see what he's saying? One man among a thousand have I found. So he's counting one by one all the women he was dealing with. Go ahead. But a woman among all those have I not found. You see what he's saying? He says, one man among a thousand. Who's that? He's talking about himself. One man among a thousand, he says, but a woman among all those have I not found. Meaning what? He was counting all the thousand women he had. All of them was dumb as hell. He says, I couldn't find a virtuous woman. Remember, Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. You understand? And his mother gave him a warning regarding women. Go back to Proverbs 31. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse... Let's start at verse 1. The book of Proverbs 31 verse 1. The words of King Le Lemuel. Come on. The prophecy that his mother taught him. That his what? Mother taught him. That his mother taught him. Come on, read on. Because what was, what was, uh, what was his mother? Watch this. Give me Titus 2 real quick. The prophecy that his mother taught him. Titus chapter 2 real quick. Titus 2 verse 3. Watch this. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 3. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as become a holiness. Really? Not false accusers. Mm-hmm. Not given too much wine. Come on. 
teachers of good things. So the aged women must be teachers of good things. They must fall in their proper order. And what? They must humble down to the role that God gave them. Go ahead. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior has become a holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young woman to be sober, right? to love their husbands, to love their children. You see that thing? They may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands and to love their children. So his mother was a what? His mother was a Proverbs 31 woman. But now it's time for him to go and find one. He couldn't find one. That's the key. That's the point. Out of the thousand women he had, he, there was none out of those thousand. And King Solomon was the wisest man that walked the earth. And he, he couldn't find a virtuous woman. You understand? Because the example that he's writing about in Proverbs 31, where did he get that example from? From his mother. Okay? Read on. Verse 5. To be discreet. Chaste. Keep us at home. Read. Good. Obedient to their husbands. That the okay. word of God... Right. Read verse 5 again. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 5. To be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, mm -hmm. good, obedient to their own husbands. Obedient to their own husbands. Come on. That the word of God be not blasphemed. That the word of God be not blasphemed. The word of God be not blasphemed. Watch this. So this example right here that we are reading in Titus 2, verse 3 through 5, this is an example of a virtuous woman. Go back to Proverbs 31 now. Proverbs 31, verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 1. Read. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. That his mother taught him because what? She was applying what we are reading about in Proverbs in Titus 2. Come on. What, my son? And what, the son of my womb? And what, the son of my vows? Read. Give not thy strength unto woman, nor the ways to that which destroyeth kings. You see what he's saying? He says, give not thy strength unto women. Nor thy way, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Meaning what? This, this, this Solomon's mother was a wise woman. She's telling, him, she's telling him, listen, don't give your strength unto women, nor your ways to that which destroyeth kings. So what is she saying? Give me Sirach 9 verse 2 real quick. Ecclesiasticus chapter 9 verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 2. Read. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. You see what he's saying? He says, don't give your soul, your soul, your soul. That's your strength unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. Meaning what? Because what, what brothers tend to do, you understand? They get too excited. They be doing pillow talk. They be talking too much. Okay. Revealing things that they ought not. Guess what? That woman, she's going to set her foot upon your substance. Read that again. Verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 2. Read. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. To set her foot upon thy substance. Meaning what? She will disrespect you. Okay, but some of you brothers, you don't want to check the dragon at home. The dragon must be tamed at home. Read it again. Verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 2. Come on. Give not thy soul unto a woman to mm -hmm. set her foot upon thy substance. To set her foot upon thy substance. Watch this. Um, go back to Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 28 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 28. Something I want out of that verse. 
The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 28. Read. Which yet my soul seeketh, mm -hmm. but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. So now he's saying he has not found a virtuous woman. He didn't find a virtuous woman. Watch this. Give me, uh, give me the book. Let me see what I want to start with first. Give me Serak. Okay, give me Ecclesiastes 26, verse 3. Serak 26, verse 3. I'm going to give some examples of examples of spiritual vampires, okay? Remember, spiritual vampires, the chronicles of an unbelieving wife. Watch this. Sirach 26, verse 3. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 3. Read. A good wife is a good portion. A good wife is a good portion. A good wife is a good portion. Read on. Which shall be given... In the portion of them that fear the Lord. We shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. Watch this. Jump down to verse 13 now. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 13. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband. Mm. And her discretion will fatten his bones. Her discretion will fatten his bones. Because he's going to explain what it means by that. Read on. Verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Stop right there. It says a silent and loving. Because you can be silent and be hateful. Let me say that again. Let me repeat myself in case I started. Yes, you can be silent, but be hateful at the same be, be hateful, um, be hateful at the same time. You are silent, but you are moving with the spirit of hatred towards who? Your Lord that the Lord has set over you. You understand? Sisters coming into the truth, you are not married, you submit to leadership. That's how it goes. It says, a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Because, yes, the opposite is a loud and hateful woman is a gift of Satan. But what you want to see here says, you can be silent and not loving, and vice versa. Loving but not silent. You see that thing? So that's not a gift of the most high. You have the... That, that sister has to have both. She must be silent and loving. You see that thing? Read on. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. And that's the job of the, 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 the man to, to what? To instruct the woman. That, for her mind to be well instructed, it's your job to do it. Your job is to instruct her well, according to the scriptures. Your job is to make sure that she's silent and she's loving. You understand? And in, meaning what? What you think, she must think that too. Because the two of you shall be one flesh. So if you think one way and she thinks differently, she don't believe this truth. Let me say it again. If you think one way, according to the scriptures, she thinks different than the way you think, she does not believe the Bible. Okay? The way she thinks, it must mirror your thinking. The way she makes decision, it must mirror your thinking. If it's the opposite, that's a vampire right there. You understand? Because you are building, she's destroying. She'll suck the life out of you. She will abate your courage. Read it again. Verse 14. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 14. Read. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Come on. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. So that mind, that means if that mind is not well instructed, that mind is worthless. Because it says, there's nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. So if that mind is not well instructed, that mind is worthless. You understand? The Lord can use that spirit. Read on. A shame faced and faithful woman is a double grace mm. and a con and a continent. a continent mind a continent mind cannot be valued meaning what she is a virtuous woman she's priceless but her price is far above rubies because she's difficult to find this type of woman is very difficult to find this type of woman you understand read on 
Verse 16. As the sun when it arises in the high heaven, mm -hmm. so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of a house. So is the what? So is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of a house. So is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of a house. Watch this. We're going to deal with that part, the ordering of a house. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 13. Um, no, not Sirach 13. Not Sirach 13. One second. Uh -huh. Give me Sirach 36, 22. Sirach 36 verse 22. The book of Ecclesiastes is 36, verse 22. Come on. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. It says the beauty of a woman, meaning a beautiful woman cheereth the countenance of a man. Go ahead. And a man loveth nothing better. And a man loveth nothing better. Go ahead. Verse 23. Watch this. If there be kindness. Stop right there. If. If there be kindness. So she's beautiful. She's got, a pretty, she's got a pretty face. You understand? But here's the problem. If, it says, if there be kindness. You hardly find that one. Okay. If there be kindness. Okay. Read on. Meekness. Meekness, meaning she's submissive. She's kind and she's submissive. Go ahead. And comfort. And comfort, meaning she's a comfort. She'll comfort you. She's a pillar of rest, not a pillar of stress. Go ahead. In her tongue. In her what? Tongue. In her tongue. Remember what we read in Sarah 26, verse 14. It says, a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. So it says, if there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue. Go ahead. Then. Come on. In her tongue. Then is not her husband like other men. This is then is not her husband like other men. Because what? This husband right here has found a virtuous woman. But a loud, big mouth? No, that's a spiritual vampire right there. She will suck the life out of you. Read that again, verse 23. The book of Ecclesiastes is 36, verse 23. Read. If it be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue, Mm -hmm. Then is not her husband like other men. Then is not her husband like other men. So now watch this. Give me Sarah 26 verse 1. Sarah 26 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 1. Blessed is the man that had a virtuous wife. Mm -hmm. For the number of his days shall be doubled. Read. For the what? For the number of his days shall be doubled. For the number of his days shall be doubled. Read that again, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 1. Blessed is the man that had the virtuous wife. For the number of his days shall be doubled. For the number of his days shall be doubled. Hmm. Read on, verse 2, watch this. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace so a virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband you understand that's why it says the beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance and a man loveth nothing better if in that spirit there's kindness meekness comfort in her tongue he says then is not her husband like other men so in Sirach 26 verse 1 it says for the number of his days shall be doubled what does that mean? Watch this. Give me, jump down to verse, verse 16, Sarah 26, verse 16. I want to show you something. You see that part right there? When it says, for the number of his days shall be doubled, because this brother right there has found a virtuous woman. Read verse 16. Watch this. Sarah 26, verse 16. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 16. As the sun, when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of a house. So is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. Now, what I want to show you here is, yes, 
a virtuous woman will order her house correctly you understand because she she's going to be an example to the children if she's got and so forth and so on fine but guess what it goes beyond the house this this goes beyond your house also and i'm going to explain what i mean by that give me the book of deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 13 watch this the book of deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 13 you know what hold that we coming back hold the whole deuteronomy 113 go back to sarak 36 verse 24 i want to touch on something sarak 36 verse 24 The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a, a help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. He says, a help like unto himself. A help like unto himself. Right? A help meet. So, in Sirach, when it says, um, Sirach 26 verse 1, it says, For the number of his days shall be double, because this man has found that virtuous woman, that is going to be what? A help like unto himself. Watch this. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 13. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 13. Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and now make them rulers over you. Verse 13 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 13. Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and now make them rulers over you. So now, what's going on here is that um, Moses is rehearsing the history. Okay, that happened in the book of Numbers. Okay, so what we're reading here and in Exodus. So what we're reading here, Moses is saying, listen, take you wise men and understanding. He says, take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes. Meaning these are renowned men. They are known. So guess what? If you are a help meet, okay? If you are a help meet, not only must you known in your house, yeah, in your house you are known, your husband, your children, all of that, all praises. But also over and above that, you must be known just like your Lord is known for the works that you are doing. You understand? Because if you don't, if you are not known, that means you are not putting in work. Okay? So that means you are not putting in work. You see that thing? And if you if and if you are known, it's good to be known because you have a good name, but you can be known because you have an ill name. You understand? And guess what? Read that again, verse 13. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 13. Take you wise men and understanding, and known among your tribes, and I'll make them rulers over you and I will make them rulers over you. So these men, they are known, they are putting in work. You understand? They have a good name in the body and all that. You understand? It says, I will make them rulers over you. Watch this. As a sister, you must also be known just like your Lord is known. You understand? In the congregation, you must be known by your works, the things that you do. Okay? But let me tell you where it all falls apart because watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, okay? Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, Sarah 25 verse 13. Let me show you where this whole equation falls apart. Because if you have a spiritual vampire on your side, here's, what goes, here's what's going to happen. Sarah 25 verse 13, watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 verse 13. Read. Give me any plague. But the plague Come of on. the heart and any wickedness, but the wickedness of a woman. He says, give me any plague. You can give me any, a plague is a disease, right? He says, give me any plague, but the plague of the heart, of the mind. Remember what we read in Ecclesiastes 7.26, because I know some of you have forgotten already. Go ahead. It says, and any wickedness, but the wickedness of a woman. Now we're going to deal with that. This spiritual vampire right here, jump down to verse 16. 
the book, the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 16. Read. I had rather dwell with the lion mm -hmm. and the dragon. A, a lion, he says, a lion and a dragon. You ever seen a dragon, right? You've seen a lion. One spits fire out of his mouth and his nose. The other one just wants to devour you. He says, I would rather deal with those two creatures, come on, than a what? Than to keep house with a wicked woman. Than to keep house with a spiritual vampire. Go ahead. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face. Because you can see in the facial expression or in the spirit that the sister is moving in, you can see by her countenance. Her countenance will tell you everything that's going on. You understand? It says the wickedness of a woman changeth her face. Read. And darkeneth her. And darkeneth the countenance like sackcloth. And she darkeneth, her, her countenance is darkeneth like sackcloth. The ones that the, a sackcloth is like a sack that we used to wear, we used to wear when we are lamenting. Okay, moaning. Read on. Sarah 25 verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 18. Read. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. When he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. It says, her husband shall sit among his neighbors. Now remember, it says, take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. That's what we are doing right now with the ranking system, because it's biblical. Ranking system is biblical, but it says her husband shall sit among his neighbors. That means what the brethren, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. Because this woman, not only is she what she is known, just like a husband is known, but she's not known for good works, she's known for evil works, she's got an ill name. So when her husband hears the hears, hears her, her name comes up. He just feels like he can just drop dead and die. Why? Because this woman is doing what? Because your wife will be a reflection of you. You understand? Because it says there's nothing much worth as a mind that is well instructed. You understand? But the fact that if she does not want to be instructed or she is instruction, she does not apply. You understand? Or she is instructed, she agrees to apply but she doesn't apply, she don't believe this Bible. She's a vampire. You understand? But you can see through the BS. She don't believe the Bible. She don't believe it. But because you are a simp, you think eventually she's going to know. You understand? Read that again. Verse 18. Ecclesiastes 25 verse 18. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. Shall sigh bitterly. Because your job, brothers, when you get married, your job, before you get married, you must prove, obviously. Okay? As you are proving, these are the things that you need to pick up. You need to put the sister to the test as she's putting you to the test. You understand? You're not supposed to find yourself... Um, sighing bitterly among the men here we are we are going to war you are you are saying bitterly because that you have a dragon you have a spiritual vampire that you did not put a chain around its neck okay read that again verse 18 ecclesiastes 25 verse 18 her husband shall sit among his neighbors and when he heareth it shall sigh bitterly when he heareth it shall sound the shall what jesus shall sigh bitterly come on all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Mm. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. You see that thing? All wickedness is little but the wickedness of a woman. You understand? So you must be able to recognize a spiritual vampire. She does the complete opposite of what you explain or what you instruct, what you counsel. She will do the complete, that's a spiritual, that's a vampire. You understand? Or they are passive aggressive. They tell you they're going to do it. They agree, yes, sir, and all of that, but they don't do it. That's a vampire in the making also. That's a vampire in the making. You understand? 
Read that again, verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 19. All okay. wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Let the portion of a sinner, let the simp fall upon that vampire. Watch this. Now, I'm going to give an example of a sister in the truth that, um, that was a help meet to her husband. You understand? Her husband was known. She was known. And she was known not for her ill works, but she had a good name. This sister had a good name. And she was, she was a help meet. She was a pillar of rest. You understand? I'll show you the opposite and the characteristics of a, of a, 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 not a vampire, but a virtuous sister who works well with her husband, who supports her husband, who submits to her husband. You understand? Remember, don't forget now. The scripture says, um, blessed is the man that had a virtuous wife for the number of his days shall be double. Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 18. Give me the book of Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Watch this. Acts chapter 18. Acts 18, verse 24. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Read. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. So now Apollos, remember Apollos came after Paul. You understand? He was watering. Um, you understand? The Ap Apostle Paul was planting the word. The, Apollo, the Apollos was coming behind Paul to plant. Read. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So he knew only the baptism of John, but when he taught the, the baptism of John, he, he did it mightily. You understand? The little understanding he had, he taught it like the world is coming to an end because it is coming to an end. Go ahead. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and Stop expounded right unto him. Hold on. Read verse 26 again. Read it slow for me. Acts chapter 18, verse 26. Read. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. That's Apollos now. Apollos began to speak boldly. What was he teaching? He knew only the baptism of John. Read on. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard. Whom when who? Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard. Okay, Aquila and Priscilla. Aquila. He's a, he, he, was, he was our forefather who was in the truth. Aquila and Priscilla was the wife. So Aquila and Priscilla was husband and wife. You understand? Because you see, even the name is mentioned there. Priscilla. She is known. You understand? She was supporting a renowned man who was known for his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Guess what she was doing? She was working together with her husband to do what? To push the gospel of Christ. Read on. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. You see that thing? So guess what she was doing? You really need to think about this thing. Imagine um, they are coming. Mm, let me see. Does it actually mention it there? One second. Okay, hold this. Give me X. Read, jump up to verse 1. Read X 18 verse 1. Acts chapter 18, verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Read. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart, to depart from Rome and came unto them. So Claudius is Claudius Caesar. He kicked, that's when the Jews were expelled out of Italy. So Priscilla was one of them. Aquila was one of them. Come on, verse 3. And because he was born of the same craft, he abode with him and wrote, for by, for by their occupation, they were tent makers. So Aquila and Priscilla, they were tent makers by profession. You understand? They were tent makers by profession. Jump down to verse 18. 
verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave from the, of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centria, for he had a vow. So now the Apostle Paul needed to do the, the vow of the Nazarite. Remember now, he's, he's still working with Aquila and Priscilla. You understand? This is husband and wife working together, working together with the Apostle Paul. Read that again, verse 18. Acts chapter 18, verse 18. Read. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and mm. then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila having shown his head in Centria, for he had a vow. Stop right there. Give me 1 Corinthians 16, verse 19 now. Watch this. We're still dealing with our forefather and foremother, Priscilla and Aquila. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 19. Come on. The churches of Asia salute you, Aquila and Priscilla. Salute you much in the Lord. Read. With the church that is in their house. Read that part again. With their what? With the church that is in their house. With the church that is in their house. So now you have to imagine this. This is Aquila the husband and excuse me, Priscilla the wife. They had a church in their house. You understand? And guess what they was doing? When, when, um, when, when Apollos came to them, they had a church in their house. So when the people was coming in to learn, you understand, to be expounded the word of God more perfectly, that goes into Christ, you understand? When the man was coming in, the women was coming in, the children was coming in, guess what Priscilla was doing? Priscilla, give me that in Titus 2. Titus 2 verse 3, again. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. Read. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. You see that thing? The aged women must be teachers of good things. Hold this. Give me 1 Timothy 5, 14. We're coming back. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. Watch this. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. I will therefore that the younger women marry, Ray. bear children, guide the house, mm -hmm. give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So the young women must do what? They must marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Who's the adversary? The devil. You understand? So these young women, who must teach these young women? Go back to Titus 2 now. Titus 2, verse 3 again. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. Read. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Come on. Not false accusers, not mm -hmm. given to much wine, teachers of good things. You see that thing? They must be These aged women must be teachers of good things. Come on. That they may teach the young women to be sober. They must teach the husbands. hold on. They must teach the young women to be sober. So get what Priscilla was doing. Priscilla was helping her husband to do this thing. You understand? She wasn't a vampire. That's the opposite of a vampire. Because her husband was known, and she understood that my husband is known. Guess what? Mama must do. I must I must develop a good name in Israel. Because some sisters don't think like that. Because they're rebellious, they hate the laws, they don't believe the Bible, guess what? You're going to give your husband an ill name. Because when your name comes up, we're going to not look at you, we're going to look at your husband. Okay, read that again, verse 4. Titus chapter 2, verse 4. Read. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. To love their husbands and to love their children. So that's what Aquila was doing. She was, she was not... She was not um, teaching the men or she was not oblivious. She said, I don't want to get involved. You know, I don't really know. She was fully involved. They had a church in their house. So men and women and children coming in. Guess what? Aquila was dealing with the men. 
Priscilla was dealing with the sisters and the young women. You understand? And the children. That's what she was doing. Read that again. Verse 4. Titus chapter 2 verse 4. Come on. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to mm -hmm. love their husbands, to love their children. Come on. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. You see that thing? They must what? They must be discreet. They must have discretion. Chaste. They must be disciplined. Keep us at home. They must be able to take care of the house, the kitchen. They must master the kitchen. Good, obedient to their own husband. They must submit to the role that God gave them. You understand? That the word of God be not blasphemed. Because when they don't submit to a hedge set over them, the word of God is blasphemed. You understand? It's like, let's say a sister is not wearing a, a headscarf and she's coming to camp. She's coming to class and all of that. She's attending with us and all that. Guess who she's disrespecting? She's not Mary. She's disrespecting me, the leader of the camp. You understand? That's dishonor. She's dishonoring what? She's dishonoring the leader, the angels, the leaders of the camp. If I'm wearing a hat, I'm reading the scriptures, I'm dishonoring Christ. You understand? That's how it goes. Okay, read that again, verse 5. Titus 2, verse 5. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. That the word of God be not blasphemed. You understand? Now go back to 1 Corinthians 16, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verse 19. Ray? The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. With the church that is in their house. Go ahead. All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another with an holy kiss. Ray? The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. Come on. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. He says, let him be anathema maranatha. That's Hebrew right there. Read that again, verse 22. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Mm -hmm. Come on, verse 23. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Read. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now watch the this. First... What you want to... Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. What you want to understand is that Aquila, she was... Aquila was in proper order. Aquila was the husband. Priscilla was the wife. And the wife was, was a health meet unto Aquila. You understand? She was not a vampire. She was not ab 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 abating the courage of this man. She was helping him. You understand? She had that revolutionary mindset. But a spiritual vampire is not going to move like that. Because the way you think, her thought process must mirror your one. If her thought process does not mirror your thought process, she does not believe the Bible. Because her job is to glorify you. Not the other way around. You understand? Watch this. Give me. Give me Sirach 26. Give me Sirach 25 verse 22. Sirach 25, 23. Not 22, 23. Sirach 25, 23. Ecclesiastes 25 verse 23. Mm -hmm. A woman, if she maintain her husband. No, no, not 22, 23. 23, 23. That's a topic for another day right there. 23, come on. Ecclesiastes 25 verse 23. Come on. A wicked woman abateth the courage. Read. Maketh an heavy countenance and a wounded heart. You see that thing a right there? Hold on. It says a wicked woman abateth the courage. A wicked woman abateth the courage. Maketh an heavy countenance and wounded the heart. So what you want to understand is that 
if you have a, a sister, you understand? A spiritual vampire, this is what she's going to do to you. It says, this woman, she will abate the courage. Meaning what? What you do, she's going to do the opposite. And a lot of the times, it's not going to be immediate. It's going to be subtle. You understand? The opposite of what you do will be subtle. It's not going to be in your face. Remember what we read in Proverbs 5? Remember what we read in Proverbs 7? You understand? Remember what we read in Ecclesiastes 7.26? That her hands is what? Her hands as bands. And whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. You understand? So it says a wicked woman abated the courage. Meaning this woman, she will do what? She will suck marrow out of your bones. That's what the Lord is saying right here. Because here you are, you, you, you are excited about God's commandments. You want to be about the father's business and she's not. Or she makes it seem like she is, but she's not. That's a vampire. You understand? And also, sisters are going to come in. Same thing. Not married, but they will also move in that spirit of a vampire too. Okay? So, sisters, study is very important. You must study. Okay, you might need your sisters to be sharp. I need your sisters to study. Don't be a spiritual vampire. You understand? Because you, you need to be able to do, you need to be able to make sure that you prepare yourself for a Lord. And to do that, guess what? You must be able to rehearse these acts. You must fall in your proper order, your proper role. Titus 2, Proverbs 31. You must fall in those roles and do them consistently and um, you must do them consistently and you must do it with joy. That's how you're going to grow in the truth. Follow instruction and command. You're going to be fine. Read that again, verse 23. Ecclesiastes 25, verse 23. Read. A wicked woman abateth the courage, maketh an heavy countenance and a wounded heart. And a wounded a heart. Man... So, so, so imagine, she will, you, here you are, you go to war, you teach the, the scriptures, you apply, you build yourself up, and all of that. Okay? Here she comes behind you. She does the complete opposite to what? To give you, to bring you stress in your life. You understand? To nag. Okay? To be that continual dropping of water, of a leaking ceiling, so on and so forth. Guess what? She's abating the courage because you're building, she's destroying. That's a vampire. You understand? That's a vampire. Come on. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, make it weak hands and feeble knees. You see that thing is as a woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, make it weak hands and feeble knees. Remember, are we not in distress? Yes, we are in distress. What is the distress that we're in? We're raising up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. We are at war. That's the distress. So a spiritual vampire will not account for those things. A spiritual vampire will not account that we are at war. They will not account that we are, in the, we are on the front line. Will not account that we're putting our lives on the line for the nation of Israel. They will not account for those things. A spiritual vampire, guess what they will do? They will distress you even. They will add to your stress. They will make weak hands. You end up not even having courage to serve the Most High God anymore and feeble knees. You understand? That's a vampire. Because she does not mirror your thought process. Her spirit is deep, completely opposite to your one. You understand? But the sinner will be taken by that vampire and you will be devoured. Read it again, verse 23. Ecclesiastes 25, verse 23. A wicked woman abated the courage, maketh an heavy countenance and a wounded heart. And a, a woman, wounded heart. Come on. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, maketh weak hands and feeble knees. Maketh weak hands and feeble knees. Watch this. Uh, keep reading. You know what? No, no, stop right there. We're coming back here. Give me the book of Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter, give me Proverbs 27, verse 15. Proverbs 27, verse 15. 
a spiritual vampire will not account for what's going on. Meaning what? They will not account for the, the distresses that we're in as the men of the Most High, as the men of war. They won't account for those distresses. Okay, watch this. Proverbs 27, verse 15. Proverbs 27, verse 15. Read. A continual dropping in a very rainy day and a count and a contentious woman are alike. You see that thing? It says a continual dropping in a very rainy day. So let's say it's rainy, right? Your leak, your roof is leaking. And then there's a there's a drop that keeps telling coop, coop. Eventually, guess what? It starts to get annoying. At first, you can tolerate it, but over time, that drop, that 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 drop, that dropping sound will annoy you. You understand? And when it's raining even more, the, the, the sound of the of that drop increases. You understand? So it says, and a contentious woman are alike. She's always arguing you down. You say one thing, she says something different. Or you say one thing, she says she'll do it, but she don't do it. That's a vampire, because guess what? It not being done is, is taking you, you are, you, are, you are working backwards. Okay, come on. Verse 16. Verse 16. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. Stop right there. And the Read ointment that of his right Hold hand. On. Wait, 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 wait. Read that part again. Proverbs 27, verse 16. Read. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. Stop. It says, whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. Because can you hide the wind? No. You can't hide the wind. But if you hide this contentious woman, this spiritual vampire, you understand? It says, it's like you are hiding the wind. You can't hide the wind. Because she's not going to mirror you. She's not going to do what this Bible says in terms of her being to ascend into her role. You understand? So when you read in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 13, when it says, known among your tribes, and I'll make them rulers over you, these are wise men. But she's going to be a reflection of what? Of the fact that, no, you're not wise as you think you are. She will destroy you. Why? Because she does not want to do what? Humble down to what the Bible is saying. And the more you humble down and she doesn't do it, guess what she will do? She will embarrass you. She will embarrass you in before the congregation. That's a spiritual vampire. Read that part again, verse 16. Proverbs 27, verse 16. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. Mm -hmm. And the ointments of his right hand, which berayeth itself. So the ointment of his right hand, because it's like you put, you put perfume on your right hand and you hide it behind your, your bag. We're still going to smell it. You understand? And the ointment of his right hand, which berayeth itself. Meaning what? Eventually, we're going to smell it anyway. That's what he says. He says, you can't hide that. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 19, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13. A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentious wife and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. So he's saying the same thing, but the way he's putting it here says, and the contentions of a wife are are a continual dropping, the continual dropping on a rainy, on a very rainy day. You see that thing? And the contentions of a wife are a what? A continual dropping. So what he's saying is that this woman, she's going to what? She's going to dry up your bones. She's going to what? She's going to destroy you spiritually because she's a spiritual vampire. What is she sucking? She's sucking the life out of you slowly. You understand? She's sucking the life out of you until there's nothing like, until you have feeble knees, you don't have the courage to serve anymore. You understand? That's what he's, excuse me, that's what he's saying right there. Read that again, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13. A foolish Read. son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. Watch this, Proverbs 17, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 1. 
better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices would strive. You see what he's saying? Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith. Meaning what? You would rather have Shalom. you would rather have a dry morsel of meat therewith. He says with quietness than a house full of sacrifices with strife. Because where strife is, there's what? Give me that in James chapter 3, verse 16. James 3, verse 16. James 3, 16. James chapter 3, verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. He said, where envying and strife is, put some power in your reading. Come on. Verse 16 again. James chapter 3, verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Go back to Proverbs 17, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 1. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. You see that thing? Than a house full of sacrifices and strife. Than a house that is full of what? The house that is full of what? That means there's envy. You understand? There's confusion and there's, a, there's evil work going on. Meaning what? Idolatry going on. So what the Lord is telling you says, you need to be able to identify spiritual vampires. I'm talking to you brothers now. You must be able to identify spiritual vampires because we are at war, brothers and sisters. Okay? We are at war. And when we go to war, yes, our job is to teach our people because we're going there to fight the battle of Islam with all might in the spirit of Christ. The, 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 the job of the sisters is not to be spiritual vampires to obey the courage. Is to be a what? Is to be an help to the nation of Israel. You must be a pillar of rest. Put your brick in. You understand? Put your brick in. Because think about it. If you actually think about, if you think of the way, the way, um, the, the things, the, the, the things that we are in the midst of, the things that we are doing right now in the body and the work that is still um, ahead of us and all that, you really should be using every opportunity to be able to do or to be a benefit to the nation of Israel. I'm talking to the sisters now. Use every opportunity because the sisters now, they've got social media pages. You understand? Um, the social media pages that you sisters have, I need to see more activity than I'm seeing right now because what I'm seeing right now, no. Very, very little activity I'm seeing. So I need to see more. Okay. I need to see more of that stuff because think about it. If we, if, 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 if we put our brick in like that, guess what's going to happen? We are going home because the sisters in the world, they need this gospel. Okay. They do. The sisters in the, in the world that are not, that are without, they need this truth. And you sisters are sitting on valuable information, which you are not, pushing it out there so that all Israel can benefit from this. Okay. Okay, all places. Um, give me, read, read Proverbs uh, 17 verse 1 again for me. Proverbs 17 verse 1. Come on. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. It says, than a, house, than a house full of sacrifices with strife. Watch this. Give me, um, give me Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Proverbs 18, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Read. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. And obtaineth favor of the Lord. What's the favor? Now. Remember what we read in Sirach 26 when it says um, the number of his days shall be double. Shalom. Because the, we can, I can hear you. When we read in Sirach 26 verse 3, Sirach 26 verse, verse 2 when it says, uh, let's go back there. Sirach 26, Sirach 26 verse 1. Read that for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 1. Blessed is the man that findeth 
that hath a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be double. For the number of his days shall be double. Now you have Aquila, you have Priscilla, both of which are putting in work. Guess what's going to happen? Because when the Mosai looks at that and says, you know what? They are doing, they are doing great work. The, 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 the brother is putting in work. The sister is putting in work. Guess what? The Lord will what? Will make sure that you live longer. The Lord will increase your lifespan on this earth. You understand? The Mosai will increase your lifespan on this earth. The number of his days shall be double. Because this brother right here, he's got a virtuous wife. And this woman is helping him. She's a pillar of rest. She's not a vampire. She's not sucking the life out of him. You understand? So I need you men to be able to just put your spirit and sink it in this Bible. Because what's going to happen is that you're not going to be able to hide the wind. Okay? It's better that you prep yourself now to make sure that those things don't happen in the future. You understand? That's your job to do that thing. Okay? So, the sisters, I hope you understand. I need you sisters to really understand the importance of doing this. Because we are at war. Don't get it twisted. We are at war. And I need the sisters to really put your brick in. I want to see a lot of activity on the social media pages. I want to see some videos being uploaded on YouTube channel that you've got. You understand? For the daughters of Zion and the young daughters of Zion. Because there's children that are coming in. So you must embody Titus 2 and Proverbs 31. Okay? So there's going to be a lot of changes coming up. So, you know, stay tuned for that thing. All right? Watch this. Go back to Proverbs 31 verse 10. You know what? Before you get that, before you get that, give me Proverbs 17 verse 22. Proverbs 17 verse 22. Because I actually wanted this, the stick I was looking for. Proverbs 17. Verse 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Read. Really? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, mm -hmm. but a broken spirit dries the bones. You see that thing? This spirit right here? Because it says a broken spirit dries the bones. Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Matthew. Give me Matthew chapter 17. Give me Matthew chapter 17 and verse, why am I in the book of Mark? Matthew chapter 17, read verse, read verse 10 for me. Matthew 17 verse 10, watch this. Matthew chapter 17 verse 10. And his disciples asked him saying, why then see the scribes that Elias must, come, must first come? Come on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. And do what? And restore all things. He says, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Restore all things. So how did he restore all things? Give me that in Malachi chapter 4 verse 6. Watch this. This Eli Elias came and he restored all things. Let's start at verse 4. Malachi 4 verse 4. Watch this. Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Read. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, mm -hmm. which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. So the first thing that he's saying, he says, remember ye the law of Moses my servant. Remember the law, the law, the law. Read. Come on. Behold, I will send you Elias. Or I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the, the Lord is saying he's going to send Elijah before the second coming of Christ. When you see us, the reason why, when you see us now waking up to who we are, it means Elijah came and left. Go ahead. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. He shall what? And the hearts of the children to their fathers. And he shall turn the heart of the of the fathers to the children. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. He will restore unto us that which we lost. What is that? 
the laws of God. In the laws of God, uh, our identity is found, our culture, our history, where we come from, what we did to end up in the conditions that we're in. Read. And the hearts of the children to their fathers. Mm -hmm. Lest come I come and smite the earth with the curse. You see that thing? It says, he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. The heart of our forefathers is the Bible. You understand? And our fathers is Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Matthew. You understand? Luke, the apostle Paul, Moses, Ezekiel, Nahum, Habakkuk. Those are our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's the heart of our forefathers, the Bible. And the heart of the children, we the children, to their fathers before the Lord brings destruction on this earth. So now, the restoration is to restore us with what? The laws of God. Go back to Proverbs now, chapter 17, verse 22. Watch this. Proverbs 17, verse 22. Read. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, mm -hmm. but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. But a broken spirit dryeth the bones. The, in order for you to, 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 re, to restore your spirit back to how it, the most High God created it from the beginning of creation, guess what? You need the laws of God to restore you. Only the laws of God can restore that broken spirit. But it can only be restored if you want your spirit to be repaired. If you want your spirit to be restored, guess what you're going to do? You're going to put in work for your spirit to be what? To be restored. Only the laws of God can do that. But he says, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. Because here you are as the brother, you are putting in work. You are building. You understand? Guess what? Then you have your spiritual vampire next to you. Guess what she's doing? She's abating the courage. She's discouraging you. She's not building with you like Priscilla was doing with Aquila. No, she's sucking the life out of you because she does not want to restore her soul. She doesn't want to do it. He says, but a broken spirit dry at the bones. The boss talk about your mind. She's going to bring death unto you, spiritual death and physical death. Because the key is a broken spirit, broken. For to repair your broken spirit, you need the laws of God to do it. That's what we read in Matthew 17, verse 10 and 11. You understand? Give me that in Psalms 23, because David said the same thing. Psalms 23, verse 3. Watch this. Psalms 23, verse 3. He restoreth my soul. He does what? He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. How does he restore our soul? He sent Elijah the prophet to bring what? To, to, to bring the heart of the fathers to the children and to what? And the heart of the children back to their fathers. That's what Elijah came to do. You understand? To return the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the fathers must return back to their forefathers. The heart of the children must return back to their forefathers because today the heart of the children is what? The white man. The heart of the children today is the mind of the white man. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The heart of the children today is the mind of the oppressor. Everything and everything that the black man spews out of his mouth is what he learns from the oppressor. If they don't have the heart of their fathers. You understand? But they're loving the glory of the Grecians best of all. So it's time to return back. The minds of the children must return back to their true for their forefathers of the Bible. The greatest men that walk this earth. Read that again. Psalms 23 verse 3. Psalms chapter 23, verse 3. Come on. He restoreth my soul. Mm -hmm. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You see that thing? He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake, meaning the laws of God. So when you are restored, you the laws of God is what's going to restore you. And when the laws of God are taught to you, your mind is going to return back to the mind of your forefathers, not the mind of the slave master. You understand? So the sisters, I need you sisters to understand, we have a lot of work to do as the men of Israel. And the thing that I need you sisters to understand is that you, you have a role to play. And I need you sisters to play that role. Submit yourself to the role that God gave you and do it as it is written. And you have leaders set over you to guide you, to teach you. 
The only thing you have to do is to apply. Brothers too, we have a lot of work to do. I need boots on the ground, all hands on deck. That's what I'm looking for. You understand? I need you soldiers particularly. I need you soldiers to seek counsel even more. Because when it comes to seeking counsel, very wishy-washy. The brothers coming in, the new brothers, they are seeking more counsel more frequently than you do. That's a red flag for me. Okay? Read that again. Verse 3. Proverbs 22, verse 3. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Mm -hmm. He restoreth my soul. So go back to Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, verse 22. Read. A merry heart doeth good like a, like a medicine, but a broken spirit dried the bones. You see that thing? So to be, to be the opposite of a spiritual vampire, this is the solution right here. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You understand? You, you, because your, your discretion will fatten this man's bones. Your discretion. So you're going to be like medication to him. You understand? You become that pillar of rest. Because he can know that, you know what? I've got, I've got a health meet that is going to be able to do what? They are not going to destroy while I'm building. They are not going to suck the life out of you when you are in distress. Because we are in distress. We are at war. We are at war. Understand that. Give me that in uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 13, verse 6. 1 Maccabees chapter 13, verse 6. Watch this. 1 Maccabees chapter 13, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Doubtless I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary and, the, and our wives and our children for all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of, every, of very malice. You see what, uh, this is Simon now, our forefather Simon. He says, doubtless I will avenge my nation. That's the mindset I need you brothers to have. You must, you must have the mindset to avenge your nation, to restore your nation out of a decayed estate. That's where we're at now. Okay, read. Read that again, verse 6. First Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 6. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary and our wives and our children. For all the heathen are gathered, are gathered to destroy us of very malice. So at this point, it was a physical war. There was a physical war going on. You understand? But it says, I will avenge my nation. Guess what we are doing now? Our job right now, yes, we are doing the same thing our forefathers did. You understand? To go and avenge our nation. It says, and the sanctuary. You understand? The sanctuary is the, the covenant. You understand? And our wives. So today, you've got wives and all of that, sisters in the truth and all that. Guess what? Their job is to fall in line. To help the men of war. How do they help the men of war? They apply Titus 2 verse 3 through 5. Proverbs 31. That's how you fall in your proper role, sisters. Our wives and our children. Because while we go to war to avenge our nation, you understand, boots on the ground, guess what the sisters are doing? The sisters, they are what? They are falling, they are, they are submitting themselves to the role that God has set out for them. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of 1 Maccabees chapter 3. 1 Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 41. First Maccabees 3. No, no, First Maccabees 3, verse 43. Yeah, that's what I want. First Maccabees 3, verse 43. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Right? Let us fight, and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. You see what the mindset was? It says, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Because they looked at the, the decayed estate, how destroyed our people are. They say, you know what? We need to solve the problem. Leaders, they take initiative and they are proactive. A leader will look at the problem and say, I'm going to solve this thing right here. That's why we are, that's what we are doing here. We are, the, the problem was identified. The most High God put the spirit upon us to start this camp. Now we are going out there to solve the problem. But we need to do more than we're doing right now. Read that again. Verse 43. First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 43. They said one to another, 
Let us restore the decayed state of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Read. Then was, then was the congregation gathered together that they might be ready for battle. You see that, that then? It says, then was the congregation gathered together. That's a commandment right there. Give me Zephaniah 2 verse 1. That's a commandment right there. Then was the congregation gathered together. Okay? Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Gather yourselves together. Mm. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. You see that thing? Gather yourself together, O nation not desired. That's a commandment right there. So when they, when they identify the problem, our forefathers, that's the same thing that we are doing today. We identify the problem. You understand? In the spirit of Christ, we identify that problem. The Lord opened our eyes to see the problems that exist in our communities, in our nation. You understand? And then we gather the congregation together that they might be ready for battle. That's what we're doing right now, brothers. Well, in the midst of a war, and I need you sisters not to be spiritual vampires. You need to be a pillar of rest. You need to be able to what? You need to be able to be an asset. This was brought out many times, many times over in the Proverbs 31 classes, in the virtuous women classes, ascending into the Proverbs 31 many, many times. Okay? It says that they might be ready for the battle. That is what we are doing right now. It says that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion from who? The Most High God. So right now, we had, the problem was identified. Now, guess what we do? We go into the street corners to do what? To gather the people together. That we might be ready for battle. You understand? So I need you men to be nation-minded. It's nation-building time. Sisters too, be nation-minded. Be about your nation. It's nation-building time. So I need you to make sure that every decision you make, you must examine it to see, does this, is this decision that I'm making, does it benefit my nation? If it does not benefit your nation, abandon it with immediate effect. Let me say that again. If the decisions that you are making, you, must, you are not examining them, you are not in the spirit, you are not in the truth. But when you do make decisions, you must examine every decision you make. Does this decision that I'm making right now, does it, is it a benefit to my nation? Or it only benefits me and me, myself, and alone. That when you find out it only benefits you and alone, guess what? That means you are in, not in the wrong, you, are in, you are in the wrong space. You are moving in the wrong spirit. You must examine that thing and get rid of it. Because we are, we are at war. It's war time. You understand? There's no room for error. So you have that spiritual vampire syndrome. Get rid of it. You understand? That's the, for the sister. For the brothers, I need to see consistency in your studies and your counseling sessions. Because you brothers, you've got, there's brothers and the soldiers now. So I need you brothers, the soldiers, I need to see more counseling sessions going on. Okay? I need to see more of that. You understand? Stop, stop watching YouTube videos and sit down and study this Bible. Sit down and study your Bible and ask questions. Okay? That's what the Most High God is looking for. So I need you men to stay in the spirit. All right? So I'm going to end the class right here. Okay? I'm going to end it here and break bread. In the honor Chris of our Green. Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. You understand for dying for for dying for the 12 tribes of the nation of israel okay he put his life on the line for us we must put our lives on the line for the nation of israel we must follow after his footsteps okay read what you got for i received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said take eat this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, 
whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that. All praises to the Most High. All praise.